I'm the same as authors, so we cast them, and they have a Wikipedia article, so it links to them, whereas in the old style, it would not. Um, so it's a really powerful way of exploiting the connectedness of Wikidata with citations as well. And it also means that, um, say for example, a paper is withdrawn, or it's sort of replaced, or dated, or it's gone from a even being deep into a publication. You just put data on Wikidata in one place, and again, okay, all these efforts will automatically update. And also, it's supported to their minds works in any language. So as long as site view is installed on a, a language of media, you can use it exactly the same format, and it will display in that language. So that's a really powerful way of um, working across the different languages to share good references. Okay, there are many different aspects here. So um, this is another um, part of the kind of data infrastructure almost. So this is Wiki, uh, Wikibase is what powers Wikidata, it's the underlying software. And that can be also used on other different projects. Uh, so you can actually install your own copy of Wikibase and use that for that content and link it to um, Wikidata to pull more information and things like that. Uh, but a nice example of that in action, I think, is on Commons, where there's structured data for all the media files. So if you have a file on Commons, and you can add information about it to the structured data. You can say uh, who created it, uh, who, who's the logo, what was their username, what's the copyright status, what's the copyright license. You can also explain what it depicts. So you can say, in this case, this is a photo of Gandhi, uh, of a statue of Gandhi. So you can say that in structured data. And then you can use templates to automatically pull information from Wikidata and display it with that file. So in this case, um, this is a photo of sort of a, a statue. And um, so I'm using Art Photo, um, which is a really powerful template on, um, on Commons, because it gives information both about the object and about the photograph. So you say which, what, what the subject is, and it'll pull this information automatically from Wikidata. So you get the artist, you get the description, you get the location, you get the references, all comes free. You don't have to add that every single media photo on Commons. You just add that on Wikidata once and you can use it across all the accounts. And it also shows information about who's a photographer and separate from that. So you can understand both the provenance of the statue and the provenance of the photo in the same place. Um, so if you're uploading content onto Commons, um, also upload metadata onto Wikipedia, particularly if it's a notable object, if it's a statue, if it's uh, an item in the collection which is really important, have a Wikidata item for it, store information in there and link to it from comments. It's a really powerful way of doing it. This is also, uh, I was explaining before about Wikidata queries. You can also query comments um, using this um, URL. It's very similar to how you query Wikidata. There is a need um, to be a login user when you're using this tool at the moment. Um, but that will be done um, as we fill in more and more such data on comments. Because it's quite new, it's still building up, in versus building up the content on comments. Um, that will become a very powerful tool to be able to visualise photographs media and um, it's separate from the Wikidata items. And I think this is where I hand back over to Charles. Thanks, Mike. So now I'm going to talk to you about uh, a way of relying on Wikidata not only to establish a basic infrastructure for the contributions to Wikidata and now also to structure the components on commons but how you can even envision GLAM-oriented or GLAM-defined uh, projects that rely specifically on Wikidata. And this is uh, a paper that uh, I think is a good theoretical background from what I'm going to present, written by Shanir and Stein and Rafi Nashinas, in which they say Wikidata holds many exciting possibilities and open the door for a variety of new research opportunities and potential applications across all areas of science, technology, and culture. And I'm going to illustrate some of that now. Uh, so one example uh, is relying on Wikidata for semantic cataloging of some of the GLAM institutions. So content that is contributed to Wikidata is extracted using queries in order to create, uh, through templates, ways of 
establishing for each one of the, of the collection items a sort of uh, a structured catalog page in which you can actually write through some sort of natural language uh, system the description of what is being uh, added to uh, through the Glenn Wiki initiative. This becomes to some extent an example of a collaborative catalog, something that often Glenn institutions, especially in the Global South, are unable to do themselves as it leads to a lot of technical issues. And here, through Wikidata or powered by Wikidata, we are able to do that uh, more easily. And something that is also interesting. I didn't open here on this arrow, but if you open through this point, you, you will be able to see uh, true semantic uh, webbing, uh, other content that is related to the one that is part of this catalog. So we are able to connect the, the items that were shared in a way that takes into consideration the connectedness of Wikidata. Uh, Another element that I think is really important and that is part of this uh, cataloging, collaborative cataloging, is that you can also to some extent curate Wikidata apps or structured apps in a way that are geared towards this exact item that you want uh, to emphasize. So at this point, the community was, has been able to develop all sorts of apps that are really useful uh, for uh, glance. One of them is the Wiki, uh, Wikidata Image Position app that was uh, developed and that is able to identify in a structured way uh, the location of elements that are being depicted. Like I could uh, add the region of the human beings on this image and this would lead uh, to an input on Wikidata that would eventually uh, be close to a way of structuring uh, elements located on an image, following some protocols that allow for uh, computational reading of these elements. And this is super powerful in order to find elements on the image that can then be reused on specific content. Another app, I think there was a presentation about it, or there will be. It's the Wikidata Art Depiction Explorer that allows you easily to add statements around about what is the content that was donated describing. And when you edit this uh, through this app, you're actually improving the Wikidata items specifically on the description property and say, oh, this content has like trees or a specific tree, and it depicts this place, and there is a human, and it's a, or you can uh, eventually like uh, identify a specific tree that is uh, again being depicted here. Okay. So those are more generic tools. Another element that is possible for GLAM initiatives is for them to generate their own apps. So those two apps were generated by a museum, uh, the Brazilian Museum of Museu de Piranga, because for these museums, they look at Wikidata as uh, a possibility of crowdsourcing their needs uh, for content uh, curation. So on this one, uh, what we have is, is, to some extent, it's connected to the one that I just presented. Like, they wanted to know how many trees do you see on this picture? And then you can basically count them. And these will be added as a qualifier on the Wikidata item. And eventually this information will get back to the museum professional so that they can actually improve for themselves as well as for the rest of the world as this is now open knowledge. Uh, something that is for them really important. And some of these apps, this one in particular, is actually uh, now part of the museum exhibition. So people are editing uh, Wikidata on the museum, goes to Wikidata, and then I'll show you how eventually it goes back to the museum. This other app here is, uh, uh, is 
one that we use in order to uh, depict what the person that is being featured on the image is wearing or uses. Like in this case, you could say, oh, this man wears a white shirt, I guess. Or eventually it could be uh, uh, using a watch. And then truth information, and this is based on con a controlled lexicon and that the, uh, the museum relies on. This is then being fed back to uh, the museum uh, curators themselves. And I guess this shows a cycle of crowdsourcing the metadata that is so important for uh, cultural institutions that often, at least in the context uh, where I live, isn't that institutions cannot do because they don't have uh, the capacity. So they are considering uh, our community as part of their ecosystem of content improvement. Uh, this is also uh, useful and relevant for, I would say, libraries, academic libraries, or the academic setting in general, which is also a partner, of course. When we deal with uh, scholarly related content, so through Wikidata, these institutions and journals, researchers, are able to visualize through query some of the content they are enabled normally to have access to uh, on uh, proprietary, proprietary free uh, scholarly uh, repository like Google Scholar or even to paid service. And Wikidata generates like academic profiles, both for institutions and eventually uh, you're able to create them for individual researchers. This is uh, Scolia, which is uh, uh, a general tool that can be used and that provides an easy uh, way to develop just for the QID uh, item the, these profiles, but some institutions are generating these dashboards by themselves in order for these dashboards to provide the, the queries and the data that they want to have. And this allows some of these institutions to have not only the visualization of the information, but also to make decisions based on trends, data trends. Uh, another one here is that through uh, Wikidata, uh, the, the, uh, so yeah, the platform Istropedia was developed and this allows you to organize and to allow for visualization or generate infographics on this time through uh, a timeline in which you can generate an interactive timeline that is uh, being uh, updated as you update Wikidata and it allows you again now for an educational uh, strategy for the content that is donated it is again based on querying. So it's a user-friendly strategy for querying is also again uh, uh, easily doable through Wikidata items and this is just an example uh, on which you can see like Botanist Actives in South America for a specific period of time. So, uh, Wikidata has also become the major backbone infrastructure for uh, cultural heritage campaigns like Wikilost Monuments. So, many communities have uh, included their monuments database on Wikidata, which allows them to generate true like theory about uh, lists in that. Uh, is both content donation but also the coordination to document the cultural heritage that wasn't uh, registered yet so you, are, you have a better sense of the gaps of content that need to be addressed and you can also create maps that will improve 
the strategy for the community, for instance, to uh, target the, the, the monuments that don't have illustrations yet, or eventually, as Wikidata has at this, at this moment several properties for image of monuments, like you have uh, a property for an image of monuments during the night, or it doesn't make sense for Brazil, but during the winter, but <laughs> and then this can be added uh, specifically with a focus. So we have a more intelligent strategy for the name, uh, for uh, asking people for content donation. This is easy to expand for uh, different municipalities, different countries, if your country uh, is interested on Wikidata, this is uh, easily done. We've also used Wikidata as a strategy to uh, on relying on this template monument ID. You can easily discover when our content is donated on Commons if this image is actually the illustration of a monument that hasn't been uh, illustrated yet. And then you can easily use this image on the Wikidata item and then, as Mike has shown, spread this image across projects. Uh, and what we found after using for many years Wikidata powered, uh, a Wikidata powered infrastructure with Wikilove's monuments is that it has led to more diverse contribution and image users. And we are probably seeing here the largest and eventually, I hope, the more structured open repository of cultural heritage that has ever been made yeah. through this yeah. infrastructure. Yeah. So I'm glad Sandra Fauconnier is in the room because in 2019 she wrote a paper that look at uh, round tripping through Wikidata as the frontier of collaboration. And at this moment, through the technology called Tainacan, which is a Brazilian uh, based open source uh, technology, we are currently, and it's almost operational, we are currently establishing a circuit in which for the institution there is a way of automatizing content donation to both uh, Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata and then get it back to the institution. So this is a circle that uh, is being called uh, wrong tripping and there are many initiatives around the world that address this but these for the institutions that are willing to donate and to establish a connection with our community is for them the possibility of including Wikidata as part of their metadata ecosystem and very easily finding a way back for the content they are contributing. This uh, technology is supported by a research grant uh, in Brazil, it's been done by uh, public universities and um, our uh, user group. And it's probably going to be functional by the end of the year. We're still facing really large issues. So there is an issue, those are some of them technical issues. But we are also dealing with um, uh, issues around. Uh, I would say more community driven issues like how are we going to make like through a button the process of important content from a museum uh, website to Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata without necessarily going through the methods that we have relied on so far. But this is doable, it's almost done. Tainakan is again an open source WordPress plugin that has become for many uh, countries in Latin America the main uh, web solution for content that is being digitized and now we are working on its integration uh, through the data. So 
another element and then Mike just asked me to present this slide. It's a slide about Mike, so <laughs> I didn't want some self-promotion. So, uh, and why and how what we are presenting to you today was made possible? I wouldn't say Brazil at this point would be the more uh, obvious place where Wikidata would uh, flourish. But at some point, like back in the days, uh, we decided to invest in something called Wikidata Labs. And those are regular labs focused on different Wikidata topics. And monthly, we meet with community specialists in order to focus our energy, our community energy, on ways in which we can develop Wikidata and, if, and more specifically, invest in ways in which we can better integrate Wikidata and other Wikimedia projects. We've had 38 of these encounters uh, so far. They are either in Portuguese, most of them in English. You can find the link. And they are basically training sessions for the community around the use of these technologies. The, Next one is on November 21st, it's hybrid, it's going to happen at the University of Sao Paulo at uh, uh, the research lab that we normally work with and the person presenting on structuring the Wikimedia ecosystem to some extent, exploring more in depth what we've just overview today will be Mike, so you're more than welcome to join us at this follow-up event. I'll pass you back, Mike. Just, um, a few last slides before we wrap up. I um, just wanted to point towards some useful tools for getting information into Wikidata. So if you have data you want to get in, there are many automatic ways you can do that. Um, and it would be it's a whole other course a whole other lecture to go through to explain all of these. So just to point to some useful um, places. So in particular there's something called quick statements, which might make sense to with. Um, just what, it's a CSV like import. You can put, you, you format the data uh, in a well, human readable but also human readable way, and you can load it into quick statements, which uh, will go and make the edits for you. Uh, something I use a lot is Hydro Keybox, which is a Python framework that lets you interact with the data. Uh, if you've seen Pybox editing with data, it's always using Hydro Keybox. Uh, that's that lets you access information, modify it, update it create new uh, items very nicely. Um, there's also a software called OpenFan, which can also do this. Uh, I don't want to mention that too much because I've been able to talk to this uh, conference about that, so please go and see um, hopefully at least a slide for those. Um, so that's in general. There are also some specific ones for if you have citations you want to upload to data. Um, so if you load these into Zotero uh, first, which is a reference management system, open source, free to use. And you can then export from there into quick statements and go into Wikidata in a specific, nice, easy process. Uh, there's also tools like SourceMD, um, which can be used to see um, PubMed ID or the DOI on paper and load all the information in from the journal website and put it onto Wikidata as well. It's another useful tool. Um, a fun thing you can do with uh, the data is gamification. So you, if you have a data set which you're not 100% sure of, but you think this is useful pointers to information, and you want people to go and check it and say, yes, that's right, no, that's wrong. Uh, or in this case, even go to the website and check by information. And that can also be quite a fun thing to do, to do that on your mobile phone, or uh, maybe you've got a few moments. I noticed, uh, I was checking, um, this is on the list of the game, at the, at the top. I noticed that the Latin American with data contest that started on the 14th, going to the next month, that is asking for you to go to the um, website for the museum and say when is it open. Um, so you've got different options for different opening days. And I think there's also going to be other things coming up today. So it's been um, to uh, see the meetings at the Uruguay and the many other people here seem to be connected to this. Um, but it's a nice illustration of how you can just make very simple edits of um, using your phone. Um, which then benefits the wide reading system on Wikidata. There's also how do you get information out from Wikidata, um, which is what all the tools we've been demonstrating have been showing. 
And one of the ways on the key is to use Lua to describe Link2. Um, and that gives you a variety of different functions you can call when writing Lua to access the data from the Metadata data and be able to expose it to the different points. You can also access that directly through um, in templates using a statement uh, special function which gives you basic information. And that's somewhat limited in what you can do because it's difficult to manipulate it for instance in that format. Uh, another way you can use is module with data IB, which is something we developed for info boxes, but also works much more widely for Wikidata. And that lets you um, extract information from Wikidata format is displayed in the right uh, way for your article. So that's a very powerful um, way of well, keeping um, quite simple. You don't have to understand the work or anything to use it. If you're using things off Wiki, um, the basic thing is there is an API, so you can call um, that API to get information about Wikidata, uh, items or qu uh, even queries, and then you can format that into your own website, to your own service. And there is a Wikidata query service, which is using Sparkle, which we described before. You can also use that automatically. Uh, those with high wiki box also call it directly in your code. So you can run queries, you can get the results, you can process it, uh, build it with the API, and it becomes a very powerful tool. And yeah, I, I was just mentioning as well, high wiki box you can also extract all this information, you can run the queries, it can pull information directly from the data, as well as taking it. So there's still, we've got a lot of other pieces here, but we haven't got everything we really need for and making the most out of Wikidata. So this is something we're still getting. It's, it's an ongoing challenge for the community, for developers. One thing we still need is better Wikidata with media integration to make um, it easier for people to use Wikidata in Wikipedias. At the moment, we have some templates on some wikis. If you want to go to a different language with Wikipedia and start it, you have to start from scratch, copying over all these templates from other places. It's a bit cumbersome. 